start whenever. Excellent. I'll drop the agenda in the chat so you can Thank you. Thank you. add your name and your favorite book from childhood. Ooh. It might not be true because they're, I've read enough books that I'll probably forget the ones that I really liked, but Artemis Fowl was a really great series that I liked. And then they made a movie that was just not the book at all. And it took them like literally 20 years to make the movie. So the fact that they got it wrong made me very sad. The Lorax is a good one. Yeah, my mom and I used to be able to get most of the way through it without opening the book. Because <laughs> <laughs> we read a it well, times. A well-practiced tome. <laughs> I, I remember the first time I flew into Los Angeles, I I was I looked out the window and I'm like, oh my God, this is where the drawings from the Lorax come from. <laughs> Shaggy Fur Face and Frog and Toad. Oh, I read Frog and Toad. Oh, Frog, Frog and Toad. Toads. They seemed so sad. Maybe I think they I just were. really liked the illustrations in that for some reason. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. My vibe. Yeah, no, it was beautifully illustrated. So nobody's ever heard of Shaggy Fur Face, but I still do actually have the book. I have most of my books from childhood still, if, as you can imagine, because I'm a hoarder. So there we go. <laughs> the but first step is admitting daughter, you have a problem. That all come in handy because she has a whole bookshelf. So yes, yeah. we read my, my favorite book as a parent was a book called Once Upon a Potty, which I used for potty training the children. All right. Yeah. <sighs> okay, we're at uh, 12.04, so let's just get started. Um, welcome, everybody. It's another OSPO uh, working group meeting. Um, Thank you so much for coming. We very much enjoy hearing from OSPOs far and wide about things that are going on in your communities and things that are going on in the broader community you may be aware of. And uh, talking about big, broader community things that may or may not be going on, I'm gonna put Sean on the spot. Tell us about Augur. Sure, uh, we have started an Augur working group um, inside of Chaos, which meets actually immediately before this meeting every two weeks. Um, we had our first meeting just uh, an hour ago and uh, we had about uh, 10 or so people there, and the, we rolled, the focus was a bit technical, just trying to get people an orientation to how to create uh, metrics endpoints and update metric endpoint documentation in Augur, which is going to be our first community initiative. And I think the first meeting was uh, extraordinarily technical, and uh, we will move uh, to a less technical format going, you know, going forward, but trying to get people off the up, you know, off to a start so that they kind of know where the moving parts are uh, for creating API endpoints. And over time, um, the aim is to build up an Augur community where at least some people are interested in understanding the tool more deeply um, and beginning to work on it uh, from an issue or patch perspective. So just getting started. That, Beautiful. That's the, up, that's the update. Yeah, I'll probably... Uh... I'll I'll do my best to drop in. It's tight with the schedule, but it is. I do it's... think that I'll have some uses for Augur in uh, measuring viability soon because I noticed that there's an overlap of Grimoire does these things and Augur does these things, and there's like different ways to measure everything. Yeah, that's true. Um, can you talk a little bit about the the um, the GraphQL API and where that's where that's going? Yeah. So we have a we have a branch that contains a GraphQL API, um, and I'm meeting with one of our other some of our, our uh, four of our other maintainers uh, later this evening uh, to look at that progress. I believe it's ready to be distributed, but as Augur has developed a user base, I've also been slower to just release things. Um, but the GraphQL API uh, would essentially allow you to take a look at the Augur schema. Um, 
and be able to query a lot more things dynamically than you're able to query through our, our existing RESTful API. So it uh, it offers a way of, of freeing the data, I suppose you could say, uh, that is within Augur uh, to in, in much more of the data that's within Augur. And so that's, um, that's what uh, we're working on. And that's one of the things that we're working on. And uh, I expect to be able to release that and then uh, do a release announcement, um, maybe even a podcast about that, um, you know, and we can make it be about metrics APIs more generally, but um, I think a podcast would be a good way to get that out in front of people as well. Awesome. Yeah. Would love to hear that podcast. I, uh, I know we recently did one. Um, it's a great little system that we have set up here. Mm -hmm. It is. So any other uh, thoughts, feelings, contributions about Augur software community from anyone on the call? Okie dokie. Then we will move on to all things open. Uh, I fought to go to all things open and I'm very happy that I get to go because I'm going to be missing. Um, uh, I took my vacation for my first wedding anniversary right over community summit, uh, the LF members community summit and then KubeCon. So I don't get to do like a couple of the big conferences, but I will be at all things open that this is, this is to entice you to come. If you're not coming already, please go. I'll be there. Um, so I wanted to ask in this meeting, for folks who are going, what kind of talks we're interested in, what kind of things we'll be looking for, uh, and what kind of uh, like focus are we taking in attending the conference and uh, looking for talks? Because I think it'd be interesting from the chaos OSPO perspective to hear where people are interested. I am going to be going to the diversity and inclusion and open source on Sunday um, because I think that it's something that we want to think more um, as a newer OSPO at Verizon. We want to start our communities with in, uh, diversity in mind as we start setting up the formal processes to um, like make uh, just make diversity a first class citizen instead of something that we do after we're already established and after we already have these communities set up. That's something I'm thinking yeah. about. So, so um, I think that this year, the diversity and the community are on the exact same day, which is kind of a bummer because I want to go to both, but mm. I'll have to pick one. <laughs> Yeah, they're both Not free. Sure. I wonder if you can just pick which talks you want to go to. That might be good. And Chaos has a booth, so I will be getting a sticker. And I think um, I think there will be more swag there, too. Oh, my God. Uh, I accidentally washed all of my Chaos stickers. So oh, oh, no. I ended up in my backpack, and I put a, my backpack in the wash, and then it it went everywhere, but just know that if you ever have to clean up stickers or tissue, aspirin apparently dissolves all of that. So I did that last night. <laughs> Ooh, um, I'm, I won't be attending All Things Open, but it sounds like it's a really great event. And um, it's I have heard feedback that it's unfortunate that the community event and diversity event are on the same day and that it's on a Sunday, which is not supposed to be technically a work day. And so they're less attended, but are just as important. Um, for the other ones, I, I like attending the um, some of the lawyery ones, the legal ones that mm. I um, just want to kind of catch up on like what's what other legal um, groups are doing since um, sometimes like I know our legal team will join um, a few conferences, but uh, just kind of hearing what's happening now is important. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I won't be at the member summit, but I think the next one I'll go to is um, GitHub Universe, which is the same week as KubeCon, unfortunately. But they are having an OSPO board, advisory board meeting during GitHub Universe. Awesome. Yeah, well, we hope to uh, maybe see you at GitHub Universe. Christine, you have a talk. Which talk are you? 
giving? I'm at the giving a talk. End of Monday? It's at the beginning of Monday, and I think it's related. It, well, I should know what it is. It's it's uh, <laughs> AI, AI ML security. Okay. Like, yeah, around generative AI and all this stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Go to Christine's talk. I'll be there. Christine, I'll support you. <laughs> the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah, I'm interested a lot in the um, security and big data because I know the data that I think OSPO works in isn't normally seen as like enterprise data warehouse grade, at least in my experience, but I am interested in what processes we should be using for that and whether or not um, where like Augur and Grimoire are going to fit into that space. So yeah, thought I'd bring it up, thought I'd ask people what they're doing, but we'll catch up with y'all as we're over in the booths and as we're going to these talks. Okay, uh, moving on. There's a save the date for ChaosCon EU at FOSDEM on Thursday, February 1st. More details and registration. Uh, looking for sponsors. Yes, so we just, we just confirmed the, the venue. So we're in the same hotel that we were in last year. I think it's like the Bedford, Bedman something hotel. Uh, uh -huh. We had a really great space, like the top floor of this uh, really nice hotel. So it uh, should be lots of fun. We're working on the schedule and stuff now. So uh, yeah, so save the date. And then if you're interested in sponsoring, sponsorships help us, uh, you know, pay for things like like food and the, the hotel as well. So uh, we'd appreciate that. The sponsorship's pretty cheap and we're, we're totally flexible. If, like you want to sponsor something that's not in the sponsor perspective, you can just talk to, talk to Matt about it. Awesome. Sponsor, go, enjoy. Sounds like it's going to be great. Going one further with that, Matt G has book chapter updates to share. Yeah, okay. So here. I put that on the agenda and then uh, realize he's not here. So let's just skip that and do it next week. <laughs> skip and do it next week. Sounds good. Um, update from the App Ecosystem Working Group. Yeah, hi. I put that in the agenda. So, um, hello everyone. Uh, this is Mary Blitzen. I um, I am liaison for the uh, ecosystem working group. So, um, I just wanted to like give updates on where we are currently. So, we have had two meetings so far. Um, we just we just started, and um, we've been able to like identify some metrics. That we think might be useful. Um, however, on the last community call, we resolved to like um, cross check some of those metrics with what we already have um, in chaos, right? And I'll be working on that and be giving updates by next week. So um, you can take a look at the doc um, to see some of those metrics. Um, the description and um, notes we, we've left on the doc as well. That's great. Um, what would you say the focus of these um, like metrics that you're tracing right now are? Because I'm reading through them and trying to get a feel for like, are these community based? Are these for people who use open source? Like, do you have that idea uh, charted out yet? Um, so I think this is, these are heavy on community, right? Um, Georg would have been the best person to like, um, get more details on this. Um, but, but I think they are heavy on community, right? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. They're heavy All on right. community. Well, thank you for that update. Um, the next agenda item is replace this with your agenda item. And the agenda item after that is stuff for the next meeting. So I'm going to take a second here. We're at 15 minutes in. So if there's anything else anybody wants to chat about, uh, please speak now. Going once, going twice. Okay. 
then we have no more agenda items. We will see everybody again at the next OSPO metrics working group. <laughs> That's it. Okay. All right. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, yeah. Gary. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Bye.